Hello and welcome to another video with me, Jo from JH Leather. Today I'll be showing you how to make cheek pieces on our bridal making part 2 video. So for this tutorial you will need a strip of 5 8 leather, 2 bridal buckles, 2 billet hooks and some looping. So to start with we're going to find the best end of our leather. And once you've found the best end we're just going to square this with our set square. And we're going to start to cut out our bridal uh, bridle points so I mark mine a sixteenth over a sort of a quarter inch long and then one sixteenth in from either end and then just cut this with your head knife if you're still new to this you can draw a line between these points with your ruler first so you've got a line to follow and then square the ends or the corners uh, so they're not sharp we're then going to mark one and five eighths on the grain side this will be where the centre of the pippin is and then flip it over onto the flesh where we're going to mark 5 inches for the billet and then 2.5 inches for the overall length of the billet. And so for the overall length of our cheek pieces, this is going to be 8.5 inches. So fold your point over and you just want just the, uh, the point bit sitting uh, on that second uh, mark across the leather. And then mark at 8.5 inches. And then you want to add another inch and a half to that and square that end and then nick the corners. I'm also going to mark three inches on the grain side and mark a line across here because we're going to be doing a reverse turn. Once you've got your first cheek piece cut out, you can then repeat the process and cut out the second cheek piece. So that's our two cheek pieces cut out. We're now actually going to mark, oh, make the platforms for our billet. So you want to cut two, two and a half inch long strips and then just nick the corners of on these just so they're not sharp. And we're now going to mark one and eight in from one end, and that will be the oval hole. And once you've done that, you can now edge number one both of the grain sides of your platforms. And then on the grain side, on your actual cheek piece, you can mark everywhere except for that three inch mark that we did where the turn will be. And then on the flesh side, you can mark, you edge everywhere except where the platform is. Okay, so once you've done that, you can now stain and crease your cheek pieces and platforms. So as you can see here, uh, the end of my uh, dobber just fell off. Uh, <laughs> this happens because they do rust over time because it's not the best metal used on them, but they're relatively cheap, so it's not a problem when it does happen. And once you've done staining all your bits here, you're now going to crease them. Okay. 
Okay, so we're now going to punch some holes. So first of all, you want to just even up um, the holes on your billet and punch a overall 21 hole at that 1 and 1 8 mark. On your main cheek pieces, we're going to be using a pipping punch um, sort of down the end. So you want to even up uh, where you marked your hole. Now that's going to be the centre of the eye of the pipping punch. So you want to mark just a little sort of line sort of up the strap from that so that your pipping punch can follow that and punch this all the way through. And then as always on our cruise we will be marking two tram lines either side of our centre mark to make sure we get our crew hit nice and straight there. Okay, so once you've done that, we're going to get our number six edge tool and just take out the back of those two crew punches that we just made, as well as the, the oval punches on our platforms. And then on the platforms, you can now skive the ends to half thickness. So when putting your bullets in, you want the back um, of the hook to be facing the short end of the strap. And once you've done that, you're just going to mark out for your uh, fixed loops. So you want three fixed loops on each strap. So you need six in total. And we're also going to need two running loops, one for each strap also. Now we're going to do our stitch marks. So stitching on our billet. Oh, sorry. Stitching on our cheek pieces is quite easy to mark out, so we're going to mark five inches and then two and a half inches further on from that, and that's going to be where our stitching for our billets and our platforms will be. So that they'll be in line with the area that we marked out earlier, and then just with your dividers, draw your stitch line up here, and then stitch mark with your number ten uh, stitch marker. Now, if you're making half inch cheek pieces, um, you probably want to put your uh, stitch line a bit further out than usual just to account for that billet hook uh, because they can be quite chunky. So, once you've done that, you're going to mark or stitch mark your running loops and you want to do both ends the same. And then once we've done that, we're just going to make the turn on our buckle end. Now pop your buckle in and make a turn and then mark with your thumbnail where your stitching will go to and also where you want it to end. So that'll be at that three inch uh, mark that we made. And then stitch mark again with your number 10. And do the same for both straps. So, other than that, we are just going to 
um, use a stitch groove to mark where our platforms are going to go. This just helps sort of the platform, the um, the billet hook, uh, sit in uh, the right place on the cheek piece. You don't want to do this too deep. You just want to take just a sort of the surface uh, sort of piece of leather off, and it's just a little groove for the billet hook to actually sit in. And it just stops that billet hook from sort of wobbling around um, and getting into the wrong place as it were um, so it helps a little bit with the stitching but also keeps that um, once it has been stitched it will keep that upright and central so once you're in that you can then guide the ends of your turns We're now going to put our cheek pieces together. So first of all, we're going to be stitch, oh, tacking in the loops on our billets. So you want to have your loops in the, so they're caught in the third or fourth stitch mark. So if you just mark that out sort of first and then just tack those in and then sort of tack the rest of the platform in sort of hanging over the edge of your sort of bench or thing, it just makes it a bit easier. Um, once you've done that, you're then going to sky for the ends of your running loops and stain these and then we're going to put our running loops or stitch our running loops together. I'll put a link at the end of this video to my uh, loop making uh, video that I did. Um, it's a bit slower and it's a bit easier for you to see. So you're basically back stitching uh, so single hand stitch in your loops and then put, pop your needle between the layers on the last stitch and stitch the other side and then you want to just tie this off on the uh, stitches as well but again in this other video um, it's obviously slow down and I go into a bit more about how to make your running loops So once you get your first one done, you can pop that on your loop stick and stitch the other one. Okay, so once you've stitched with the loop, you just want to tap the original uh, loop you stitched that's on the loop stick to get it nice and square, and you're just going to recrease that one. And then once you've done that, you can pop your other one on the, the loop stick, and whilst that one is just stretching, uh, you can tack uh, your buckle turning on your first. Uh, cheek piece and then again you can just tap your loop and recrease that one ready to go on to your second cheek piece and then tack your buckle in remembering to pop your loop on you want sort of like a pair I guess it were so you'll have the stitching on your running loop facing to the left say on one and to the right on the other um, just so when they're on the horse you've got sort of a right and a left and the tail end of the running loop is facing to the back of the horse uh, this just stops things uh, from rubbing so we're now going to stitch our uh, cheek pieces together so you want to do one back stitch to start with and then continue stitching the rest of your uh, billet as normal
Now, they can be billets. Uh, they can be quite um, hard to hold in your clams. And they do move around a bit, especially if you're doing a half inch um, sort of cheek piece, then they, they do sort of jump, tend to jump around. So uh, just sort of be aware of this. Um, but if you sort of angle your cheek piece like I have here, um, it does seem to stay in a bit easier uh, than if you sort of lay it in straight, for example. Now when you get to the end of your billet, you want to do your two and a half stitch um, back stitches and then you can either start a new uh, thread or you can swap your threads from this side onto the other side and do two and a half sort of stitches to start there. Um, so you'll go back over these and they'll lock the thread in place. And where your loop goes, it's easiest if you just pre all this section and then pop your loop in. And you want to make sure it's nice and straight and in line with uh, the original size. You didn't want to put it so uh, one end is higher or lower than what the original side was. You didn't want a wonky loop. Okay, so when you get to the end, remember to do your one and a half back stitches and then cut the ends of your thread. And you're now ready to stitch the buckle turn on your cheek piece. So again, you're going to do a stitch back and then you're going to have one stitch over the edge of your leather. And then you continue stitching the turn as normal.
Okay, so once you've uh, come to the end, you just want to cut your threads off and then repeat the same thing for your second uh, cheek piece. And you should have a pair of cheek pieces looking like this and then cut off any excess threads that you might have. And then we're going to recrease, restain and stretch the loops on our, our cheek pieces. Okay, so you should have your two cheek pieces looking like these. Uh, so that is the end of this bridal making tutorial. Uh, next time we'll be going into making the noseband. We're going to make a plain canvas and noseband for this bridal. Uh, there will be other videos later on uh, with sort of more advanced sort of uh, bridal work and nosebands and brow bands and that sort of thing. But for now, that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. Also, if you want to help support us in our video making, you can head over to our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash jhleather where you can sponsor us from as little as $1 a month and we've got a few sort of perks with free giveaways and sort of name credits in videos. And also, please do check out some of the other videos I have here on the channel. Thank you.